Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock News in Borean International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa received today at the Friar Palace, Deputy Governor of the Eastern Province in Saudi Arabia, His Royal Highness Prince Ahmed bin Fahed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz al Saud, in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa. Deputy Governor of the Eastern Province conveyed greetings of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz al Saud, and Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Premier and Defence Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz al Saud, and their wishes for progress and prosperity for the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Majesty then requested the Deputy Governor to convey his greetings to the Saudi monarch and the Crown Prince, and his wishes for further progress and prosperity to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. His Majesty the King praised the deep-rooted bilateral relations and healed the cooperation and the coordination level reached by the two countries in all fields. He praised the role of Saudi Arabia in facilitating the movement of the citizens of the two countries through the King Fahad Causeway. His Majesty also expressed appreciation to the firm stances of the custodian of the two holy mosques towards Bahrain and its efforts in enhancing bilateral cooperation. He praised the pioneering role of Saudi Arabia in enhancing GCC Arab and Islamic joint action and the efforts in defending Arab issues as well as maintaining security and the stability of the region. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Qadabia Palace His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and they both affirmed that the initiatives of the government will continue to enhance its services through collective efforts, development and innovation. They added that the work in the government is continuing to develop non-oil revenues through the development of vital economic sectors. The Royal Highnesses praised the growth of the non-oil sectors and said that the events held in Bahrain support the government directives to achieve further progress in tourism, cultural, commercial, industrial and sports fields. They also praised the success and the huge participation in the regional and international events hosted in the Kingdom which enhanced the status of the country. The Royal Highnesses then stressed the importance of the optimal recruitment of modern information technologies, especially in the means of communication and using it for the purpose of upgrading services and their quality.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired today the weekly Cabinet meeting. The Cabinet extended congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on the occasion of the 17th anniversary of the National Charter, affirming that the National Charter paved the way to a new phase of democratic national action and contributed to the development of the Kingdom. The Cabinet noted the National Charter's role in enhancing political participation in making national decisions, highlighting the national unity evident in voting on the various achievements and gains. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed to hold specialised exhibitions that promote Bahraini industrial products and market them on the regional and international levels, as well as to attract more industrial investments to the Kingdom. He also commended the success of the Gulf Industry Fair 2018, which was held recently under His Royal Highness's patronage, highlighting its role in supporting the government's approach in this field. His Royal Highness also directed to study the establishment of a new health centre in Badea and assigned the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning to allocate a location for the project. His Royal Highness followed up on the implementation of the Mohammed bin Khalifa Specialist Cardiac Centre in Awali. He also commended the efforts of the Coordination Committee, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, in transferring the examination of expatriate workers to the private sectors. The Cabinet reviewed the results of this initiative, which proved its effectiveness in speeding up procedures for examining expatriate workers, reducing the waiting period from three months to less than one week, and reducing the time of issuing medical reports from one month to one week only. 33,000 medical examinations were completed by the private sector in accordance with the new system since its establishment on the 19th of November 2017. The Cabinet also reviewed the events and festivals to be held in the Kingdom during the first half of 2018. It commended the variety of the projects which reflects the success of the Government's approach in diversifying the sources of income. It also welcomed the wide participation in Bahrain Shopping Festival, Shop Bahrain, which attracted more audience and revenue compared to last year. The Cabinet com commended and valued the role of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, led by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud and his Crown Prince, in serving the Islamic and Arab worlds and facilitating the procedures for pilgrimage. The Cabinet discussed the issues of incriminating any images or videos that violate the privacy of individuals through the misuse of social media or other public means. The Cabinet approved the renewal of a new directorate in the Transportation and Communication Ministry under the Minister, which is the Directorate of Strategic Planning and Projects, that specialises in implementing the comprehensive quality management system for the Ministry's developments and ensuring compliance with all requirements of this system. The Cabinet approved an agreement between the Bahraini and UAE governments regarding air services between the territories and beyond, and appointed the Minister concerned to the final signature. The Cabinet approved five proposals presented by the Council of Representatives on investments in the medical field, circulating courses in first aid and home and occupational safety to government employees, kidney transplant strategy for kidney failure patients, the use of text messages as a reminder of some government services and the parking in the King Hamad University Hospital. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received a cable of thanks from the Chairman of Bahrain Basketball Association, BBA, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, expressing appreciation to His Royal Highness's congratulatory cables on the occasion of the National Basketball Junior Team's victory in the GCC Championship. He praised the support of His Royal Highness and affirmed keenness to make further achievements that will enhance the status of the Kingdom internationally. He expressed thanks and appreciation to the continuous support received since they assumed the responsibility of chairing the Bahrain Basketball Association, in which it enhanced the team's ability to compete on the regional and international level. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa then conveyed the deep appreciation of the team members for the care and support they received, in which it motivated them to make various achievements. He affirmed keenness to exert more efforts to achieve more progress in the basketball sport and strengthen the status of the kingdom. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today in Ritfa the Deputy Governor of the Eastern Province in Saudi Arabia. 
His Royal Highness Prince Ahmed bin Fahad bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, who conveyed the greetings of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and the Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Premier and Defence Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and their wishes of progress and prosperity to the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister affirmed that the connection between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia is eternal, noting the development and progress in Saudi Arabia under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques and the support of the Saudi Crown Prince. He emphasised the keenness of the Kingdom to enhance cooperation of bilateral and Gulf coordination with Saudi Arabia. His Royal Highness recalled the role and efforts of the custodian of the two holy mosques in maintaining security and stability in the region stressing that his efforts are appreciated and are a source of pride. His Royal Highness urged the Deputy Governor to convey his greetings to the Saudi monarch and the Crown Prince and his wishes of further progress and prosperity to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Deputy Governor expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his keenness on bolstering bilateral relations.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, received today at Qadabia Palace the Minister of Health, Fika bin Saeed al Saleh, who introduced to His Royal Highness the Under Secretary of the Minister of Health and the Assistant Under Secretaries and Managers appointed at the Ministry. His Royal Highness congratulated them on their appointments, wishing them success in their duties. His Royal Highness affirmed that the government spurs no effort in developing the health sector in various areas of the kingdom and in providing all the requirements that ensure it keeps track with the global health systems. He added that the health sector is one of the most important sectors that witnessed a remarkable development which comes to provide an outstanding health service to all citizens and residents in the kingdom, affirming that Bahrain is keen on meeting the standards set by the World Health Organization. The Prime Minister hailed the cadres working in the health sector and the services they provide to patients, asserting the government's keenness on developing cadres and medical expertise through training programmes. His Royal Highness affirmed the government's support to the health sector and providing it with highly qualified medical cadres, expressing pride in Bahraini competencies in the health sector. For her part, the Minister of Health expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his support in the health sector, commending His Royal Highness's follow-up to provide the best health services and his directives to develop them and provide all medical requirements. The Ministry's officials expressed gratitude to His Royal Highness's support of Bahraini competencies. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity, Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Sport, Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, invited the Kingdom's ministry, establishments and private sector, NGOs, national clubs and youth centres to participate in the National Sports Day by organising various sports events that contribute to make sports a lifestyle for citizens and residents. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that Sports Day is a national event that promotes many noble goals, which enhances national identity. His Highness added that Bahrain offers many important innovations in the fields of sport and public health by making sports a daily lifestyle for citizens and residents. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, the Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, congratulated His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the Bahraini people on the 17th anniversary of the National Action Charter, which was unanimously agreed upon by the Bahraini people. In his statement, His Highness said that the anniversary of the National Action Charter is a national and historical occasion and is a reflection of the national integration, whose foundations were laid by His Majesty the King by this reform project. At the global level, enabling Bahrain to reach the level of democratic countries. His Highness added that this unanimous vote represents the cohesion between the leadership and the people to develop Bahrain at the level of state institutions, law, democratic work, social, political and economic justice. His Highness also added that the vote made Bahrain a historic turning point that led the leadership and the people to make achievements in various fields which was inspired by the vision of His Majesty the King and his determination to develop Bahrain. BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa asserted that the Kingdom of Bahrain has suffered for many years from the crimes of the Qatari regime. In statements to Al Ayam newspaper, Sheikh Khalifa added that the acts carried out by the Qatari regime is far from Islam's teachings and strange to authentic Arabic traditions. He also questioned who will benefit from all this destruction that has befallen the Arab nation and how long the stubbornness and folly of the Qatari regime will continue. The BDF Commander-in-Chief noted that the Qatari people were the biggest victim of the Qatari crisis as a result of the policies and the disgraceful acts of the Doha regime, which seek to destabilise security and stability in the region. Regarding the Iranian file, Sheikh Khalifa stressed that the regime in Tehran dreams of restoring the glory of the Persian Empire and that Iran must read history to know that this dream no longer exists. He also affirmed that Bahrain is aware of the continuous Iranian regime's threats, its support to terrorist acts and the military training it provides to terrorists, in addition to funding radical groups with the aim of destabilising the security and stability of the kingdom. He further stressed that Bahrain has won over those extremist sectarian terrorist organisations used by the Iranian regime as aims to achieve its agendas and objectives in the region. 
The Minister of Finance, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, led the Bahraini delegation at the 6th World Government Summit, which was held in Dubai under the patronage of the Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. The event discussed means of developing governments, enhancing the lives of individuals and benefiting from technological developments to create effective solutions for global challenges. Over 4,000 individuals from 150 countries participated in the event, including leaders, decision makers, experts, intellectuals and business people. A number of international forums have been held during the summit, including the Global Dialogue for Happiness, the Arab Youth Forum, the Global Forum on Artificial Intelligence Governance and the Climate Change Forum. Board of Trustees Chairman for Bahrain Centre of Strategic and International Energy Studies, Derasat, Dr Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, stressed that Iran's dominance and expansion project, Qatar's subversive role and its interference in countries' internal affairs, surging terrorism are the main security challenges facing the Arabian Gulf region. Speaking at the opening of the ninth edition of the Africa Security Forum, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah stressed that Iran's expansionist project since 1979, which is led by the governance of the jurist, the first supporter of radical religious fundamentalism, contravenes all international laws and covenants. He further spotlighted Qatar's subversive role in the Middle East, pointing out the Qatari stances since 1995 has shown a constant and systematic targeting of many GCC and Arab countries as the Doha established itself as one of the roles of anarchy and division in the region and dedicated its financial and media for this purpose. Dr Sheikh Abdullah said after a few days Bahrain will celebrate on February the 14th the 17th anniversary of the National Action Charter which is approved by an overwhelming majority of the Bahraini people and is considered a milestone in Bahrain's history as a comprehensive national project spearheaded by His Majesty the King to achieve the aspirations of the Bahraini people. The Ambassador of Bahrain to the United Kingdom, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, hosted a seminar at his residence to shed light on the recent enhancement of the expanded scope of the Alternative Sentences Law in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The seminar began with opening remarks from the General Coordinator for Media and Communications at the Office of the First Deputy Prime Minister, Yara Faraj. Ms Faraj gave an introduction about the Government Priorities Framework and its Action Plan for 2015 to 2018 which reflects the government of Bahrain's strategic priorities over that period and focuses on delivering reforms and sustainable change. Ms Farage highlighted the legal and legislative reforms that are part of the plan. Bedar Mohammed from the Ministry of Interior highlighted the national effort that took place to bring the alternative sanctions and measures law into effect. The effort led to the establishment of a national committee that brought together relevant stakeholders, such as the Ministry of Justice, Ministry of Interior and Judiciary and Public Prosecution, among institutions involved in criminal justice and rehabilitation. Better also added that the bill was debated and discussed in both Houses of Parliament and became law in July of last year. The law significantly expands the scope of application of the alternative sentences, with focus on effective rehabilitation and reduction in reoffending rates through purposeful programmes that involve community service, training, pre-release programmes and others. The event was attended by Mr Hibbal Singh from Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Prisons, HMIP, Professor Dennis Summit from Oxford University, Mr William Morris, Chairman of New Century Foundation, Diplomats and Bahraini in the UK studying law and criminal justice. I'm really encouraged by this alternative sentencing in Bahrain because it's something we're looking for for the whole world. I mean the whole world should be going down this road. And to see Bahrain at the cutting edge of this new program is really exciting. It's really exciting because we need it, I think, especially for the young people. I mean, young people can get into trouble, do get into trouble, and it's not appropriate when they get really deep into the criminal justice system, get in jail, then, then not only does it depress them, but it, 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 it causes really a, a, a people are, people are the, Youngsters can so easily get into a life of crime, which is, is difficult. Um, but if alternative sentencing is brought in, then it makes a huge difference. And uh, really keeping 
youngsters out of jail. It has to be our prime objective everywhere in the world. And see Bahrain doing this is... One Today was such a great event because it brought people with different perspectives and different experiences together on the issue of prisons and alternative um, to imprisonment. And the idea of imprisonment and prisons is a controversial and debatable issue worldwide. And to have the chance to bring, to bring together different views allows each country to um, progress its prison system and in that sense improve the conditions of both prisons and the lives of society and those that um, are in the situation. As part of the efforts to facilitate trade movement and develop national economy, Customs Affairs allocated a fast lane for export trucks that guarantees a swift crossing to the destination country. Customs Affairs is working on updating customs system and procedures continuously in line with global changes. Based on the continuous cooperation and coordination with the customs of Saudi Arabia, the fast lane has been opened to complete all customs procedures for the export of the top 10 national commodity companies in Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. The fast lane represents one of the methods of facilitating commerce as trucks would cross to the destination country swiftly and easily. Upon the directives of their majesties and their highnesses, the leaders of the Gulf Cooperation Council countries, during last year's GCC summit to facilitate two-way trade between GCC countries, the fast lane for trucks had been opened on the King Fahad Causeway between the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Kingdom of Bahrain as the first exit in the GCC countries to open the lane. The fast lane is dedicated to the top 10 exporters in each country and it is operated using the pre-clearance system so as to complete all customs data prior to the truck's arrival. The lane had been open at the beginning of last December for a trial for the first company that had been qualified for it in Bahrain which is Salb Company and Nada Dairy Company from Saudi Arabia. The trial revealed that the company's crossing period had decreased from 12 hours to 20 to 120 minutes, which is a record crossing time in comparison to that of world exits. The joint development and work between the two countries continues through King Fahad Causeway to improve all customs procedures and reduce traffic congestions. In cooperation with the U.S. Embassy, the American Chamber of Commerce in Bahrain hosted a reception yesterday in honour of alumni of American universities and U.S. Embassy-sponsored exchange programmes. More in this report with Hibba abdel Kafar. As part of the Discover America 2018 week events in Bahrain, in cooperation with the U.S. Embassy, the American Chamber of Commerce in Bahrain hosted a reception in honour of alumni of American universities and U.S. Embassy-sponsored exchange programs, celebrating the great collaboration the two countries have on the educational level. We're here tonight to celebrate American education, and in particular, the way that American education brings together Bahrain and the United States, the Bahraini people and the American people. We have a Fulbright uh, program where we encourage academic exchange. We have scholars from the United States that come to Bahrain and Bahrainis that go to the United States. Uh, we have academic exchange programs and a number of ways to bring, bring together American and Bahraini universities. So this whole area of higher education is one in which I think both countries can benefit and we can use to strengthen the essential partnership between the Bahraini and the American people. Around 200 American University alumni were at the event, expressing how effective cultural exchange can be in strengthening the bond between countries. They were also speaking about the great skills they've gained and how they benefit their current businesses and future plans. It was a great experience where we have been uh, introduced to uh, entrepreneurs, to SMEs and uh, businesswomen, and also we've been introduced to uh, Women Chamber of Commerce in Washington, D.C. I did my uh, bachelor's in uh, Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas, and I did it in strategic management. Um, uh, this was in 99, and it was a fantastic experience. It uh, really opened my eyes up to the world and what uh, there is out there. I had the honor of uh, studying in the United States for six years, where I did my undergraduate degree and uh, my MBA. Uh, the good thing about studying abroad is uh, you learn uh, many skills 
Uh, most importantly, depending on yourself. A group of around 8 to 10 Bahraini students that we went to the United States and gathered with a group of uh, students from the Gulf, uh, Gulf countries and all Arab countries. We were a total of 120 students separated around six different universities. With an educational program, it's also a very important cultural program where people get to know Bahrain, get to know your culture, um, people of different backgrounds, your religion, and then it's a very open and accepting environment of um, people always wanting to learn more. The event provided a platform for U.S. university graduates to reconnect with the U.S. alumni community of business leaders who share the unique experience of studying in the United States and bringing their knowledge, skills and visions to benefit Bahrain. Nothing can strengthen the bond between the people of two countries like education and true cultural exchange, which is clearly seen here in the U.S. alumni reception in Bahrain. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul